Women like women called Daphne. Oh, Daphne, if there's Listen, any watching, we've got call to move in. on He's to plankton. <laughs> right. What is that? That's plankton, that is. That's plankton, All right. Jerry. Are you plankton. sure? It's plankton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. I am sure. Right. Definitely, definitely plankton. Yes, Thank they um, are very, very vital to our survival, ladies, as Miranda Krestovnikov is <laughs> going to explain. <laughs> so you say. <laughs> Oceans cover almost three quarters of the planet and provide 98% of our habitat for wildlife. So I've come to the Devon coastline to encounter some of the major players. Now you might think that the most abundant life forms out there are fish, but you'd be wrong. It's these, if you can see them. Plankton. The Greek word planktos means drifting, and these often microscopic life forms drift with the ocean currents, unable to swim against them. Plankton include plants like these diatoms with their green chlorophyll, and animals like these baby crabs and lobsters. They're absolutely fundamental to sea life as food for virtually all baby fish, and even the giant blue whale. Research carried out on this boat and hundreds of others is proving plankton to be one of the most important life forms on the planet. But how on earth do you study such tiny creatures in the vast oceans? Well, for decades, it's been done with one of these. It's a CPR, or Continuous Plankton Recorder, that was invented by a pioneer of marine biology in the 1920s. And it's still used by the institute that bears his name in Plymouth the Sir Alistair Hardy Foundation for Ocean Science, or SAFOS. So how does it work? OK, if I take this cover off here, and in here, oh my goodness. we'll see two bands of silk, a filter silk here, yeah. and a cover silk here. The plankton will come in through this tunnel, get caught on the filter silk, and then squashed, if you like, with the, the cover silk, and we have the plankton sandwich. This propeller at the back spins, turns returns it. the bands of silk, and from here to here, will equate to about 10 nautical miles of ocean. This band of silk here will actually tow for 500 miles. 500 miles? miles. Yeah. Wow! The longest tow we do with one of these is from Vancouver to Japan, which is just over 3,000 miles. And what we'll do there, we'll send out one body and six internals, and the crew kindly swap just the internals over. Just change the cartridge over, every over 500 time. miles? Yeah. Once the CPR returns, the team get to work analysing the sample. So far, they've identified more than 500 species. Since the silk flattens the plankton, we've also returned with some living samples in seawater. So this is the plankton sample that we brought up earlier today. It's absolutely teeming with life. These are one of the phytoplankton. They're responsible for over 50% of the world's oxygen production. You could fit hundreds of phytoplankton onto the head of a pin, yet their capacity to capture carbon dioxide and transform it into oxygen is immense and critical to maintaining our atmosphere. Known as the grass of the sea, they're also the main food for the animal plankton. So here we have one of the most common uh, planktonic organisms, and this is known as a copepod. And they're another small crustacean, a bit like a shrimp. They're actually one of the most abundant life forms on the planet, and they're absolutely crucial for other organisms that feed on them, like fish larvae. Different plankton prefer different temperature waters, and this study points to a disturbing trend in our seas over the last 20 years. Cold water plankton that was essential for many fish species like cod have actually moved out of the North Sea now. And we've actually seen a decline by up to 70% over the last 20 to 30 years. This is exactly why the CPR is incredibly important at the moment because we're monitoring these changes. This mammoth project would never have been possible without commercial vessels like container ships and ferries voluntarily carrying the pods. Sapphos has sampled 5 million miles of ocean over almost 80 years and has given us a unique insight into our changing world. We're fascinated by sharks, whales and dolphins, but all too often we overlook the most important and abundant life in our seas. Decades of research at Sapphos are showing us that it's the uncountable billions of miniature plants and animals adrift on the ocean currents that really sustain the planet that we live on. Agent, I can actually see them wriggling in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they really are in here. I don't Tiny. think wriggling's the right verb for plankton. <laughs> yeah. Do they wriggle? Well, they, yeah. Some of them do, yeah. Some, some of them, them spin, yeah. some of them swim.
Miranda is a marine biologist, very she clever knows girl. All there is you got to some know. hot girls on your sofa yeah, tonight. She knows yeah? about birds. You really well. do, Adrian. I <laughs> I'm edging further this way, actually. I yeah. find women a bit intimidating. <laughs> Miranda, oh, there's some really interesting news, actually, in terms of marine conservation. There is. There's a big bill going through Parliament, which has been a long time coming, and people interested in marine biology are very, very excited about it. It's called the Marine and Coastal Access Bill. And briefly, uh, the coastal access part of it, um, there are aims to open up the entire coastal line for everybody to, to have access to. There's about 30% of it that's, that's closed at the moment. It's incredible. Um, it's an awful lot of so, coastline. Isn't yep, it? yep. So we should all have access so we can walk and paddle and play our, our way around the coastline. Um, the bill is going to deal with uh, very complicated issues, things like overfishing, trying to make fishing sustainable so we can all carry on eating fish into the future uh, to think very long term about, uh, about fishing techniques um, and Do managing in sushi? fisheries. Yeah, I, well, I love sushi. I love eating fish, but uh, you know, I feel very guilty about eating certain Apparently types of fish. Apparently it's got worse that... since we all started eating sushi. Yeah, and there are certain types yeah. of fish that we need to avoid, so the bill will help us understand which, which types one? of fish we should be eating and which to avoid. Mm. Um, and also it's going to offer certain pockets of the coastline yeah. greater, greater protection. Um, uh, currently a, a very, very small percentage of the, po the, the coastline is protected, so okay. it's going to do that. Miranda, thanks very Hi, much. Jerry, you've